Since the 1980 Lake Placid Winter Olympics, when the American hockey team came from behind to beat the Russians, the victory has been forever known as the miracle on ice. And now some say there is a second miracle on ice in Lake Placid. It takes place in this modest building at the edge of the village and is the brainstorm of Ann Stillman O'Leary, a renowned interior decorator, and Twig McGlynn, erstwhile chemist turned distiller. At Lake Placid Spirits, the product is vodka in several flavors, with every drop made here out of local ingredients, including the water, which comes from, well, where else? Lake Placid itself. How did Lake Placid Vodka come to get started? I have a friend, Twig McGlynn, who works with me at the distillery, and he had been driving by the North Elba potato fields. What do you do with potatoes? There were fields and fields of them. There's not much. You can chip them. It's been done. The vodka was uh, a, an idea that you could take something local and make something out of it, and you'd be in an interesting new business that really was starting to take hold across America. Vodka is 60% water, and Twig takes a large water bladder down to, the, down to Lake Placid with a pump, in a van and pumps water out of Lake Placid. Our drinking water is delicious. Um, uh, he brings it back here, it runs through seven filters, including a UV filter to take out any uh, microorganisms or bacteria. Twig, what's involved in making vodka? Essentially, it's uh, the fermentation process. Yeast has attacked the sugars and whatever byproduct you're using um, that, that comes out of that is carbon dioxide and alcohol. Then, simply after that, it's a distillation that then separates the alcohol from the water and we end up with, with pure spirit. Where did you get this really great old copper distillery? I'm from the Iberian Peninsula. Where, the uh, Iberian Peninsula? Yeah, well, in Portugal, Europe? Portugal. Oh yeah, Portugal. it came from Portugal. It's a hand-hammered hand copper pot, 1,000 liters, and it's got a column over it that's got uh, rectification plates. So the alcoholic vapors that come off the liquid Go, literally go up and down until they get enough pressure built over they go over on a line arm to another column it's got some bubble plates and the cooling process and ours is pretty neat it's got a two-phase cooling process and um, so then the vapors you know recondense and come out of the of the parrot when I set up our still I literally uh, put our diagram on the wall how we're gonna have our elevations what needed to happen with the uh, line arm coming over but um, how's that taste it's, it, this is rough. This is about 165, 170 proof, and it, it, it's um, you know it's I, I, it's clean, but it's um, it's it's strong. Are we talking gallons a week of the vodka? We're pulling off roughly 18 to 22 gallons at a at a, a, a time at a distillation, and then that gets tanked. We roughly have 55, 60 gallons, and then we do uh, a dilution where we add the water that we've taken from the lake. So how many cases of vodka go out of here in a week? We're only, you know, roughly between a, a, a 800 to 1,000 bottles a month. You, you enjoy doing this, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's been uh, quite interesting uh, kind of relearning um, high school chemistry and, and biology and, and some things. So it's been a bit of a challenge. Well, it's a very tough business. There was no playbook. When we started this, there was no one you could call. You couldn't call a microbrewery and say, how do you get going? The equipment's different. It's a different arm of the law that you have to uh, answer to. And so uh, you, there was no playbook. And we found it. no one was willing to talk to us. So we thought it was going to cost X amount. Well, it cost 10 times that. The equipment has been a trial. We have some equipment that we've never been able to use and some that we overuse. So it's been a learning experience. It's been a difficult experience, but I think that um, Twig has been so exceptional at figuring out the problems and getting the stuff in the bottles because even that part hasn't been easy. There's, there are old uh, recipes that we look at and sometimes they don't work in, in the 21st century. Uh, we have three products. We have P3 Placid Vodka, which is a grain vodka. Um, we have our potato vodka, which is called 46 Peaks Potato Vodka. It's gluten-free. And we have Alpenglow, which is a cranberry vodka. So how good is your vodka? Oh my gosh, it's delicious. Actually, I have been told that our potato vodka is the best vodka on the market. Um, and they're, they're all different. Everyone likes something different. The grain vodka would, would, I would say, be more like a kettle one, and the potato vodka is more like a Chopin. And some people are either potato vodka drinkers or they're grain vodka drinkers. The potato has a viscosity to it, so it's, for me, it's a little oilier and it, it slides down a little bit easier. I mean, vodka, it, it is fire water, let's not forget. We are currently working on a gin that Twig is, uh, he's got a little chemistry set, set up. Right here we have a, uh, a mini distillation. We're testing some um, 
botanicals, about 20 of them, that we've pulled over into small samples to be able to make our gin, which will have uh, one local ingredient, white pine. And who, who's going to decide bingo? Yeah, I think uh, between Ann and I and, and a few friends, we'll, we'll have a little tasting sessions that'll, that'll you know, um, different combinations that we've put together. Like one may have um, a citrus, there's, there's one citrus orange or a citrus lemon, or actually some herbals that are like meadowsweet and lemongrass are, are, are like, I guess some people might call them weeds, they're herbs that then actually bring in a very strong citrus uh, flavor. People drink when they're happy and they drink when they're sad. Um, so liquor never quits. They may downgrade a bit, but we're sort of in the middle of the pile when it comes to money, and, and we've done all right with this. Uh, and it, it, I, I don't see this industry fading away. So at the end of the day, to relax with a beverage, what do you have? I have a 46 Peaks potato vodka with tonic. <laughs> Yeah, and it's uh, quite enjoyable to be drinking your own. The Adirondacks are very iconic, and anyone that's ever vacationed here remembers it with a fond memory, whether it's the streams, the clean air, the hiking. It's got a clean uh, feel to it. So I think that when people think of Lake Placid vodka or Adirondack vodka, that's what they think of. And because it is 60% water, they think of our clear, crystalline streams. Uh, we have used, in every case, we have used a local tried to use local ingredients. We have in our Alpenglow uh, local cranberries from the Cranberry Bog up in Gra Brasher's Falls. It's been sweetened with maple syrup from Cornell. Our uh, potato vodka, the potatoes were grown at Tucker Farms and Gabriel's. So we've tried to incorporate a, a truly local feel and I think people are buying local these days. I'm going to make for you our signature drink, the fabulous Miracle on Ice. It's based on the 1980 Olympic hockey game held right here in Lake Placid where the Americans stole the gold from the Russians. Red, white, and blue. The red is cranberry juice. The white is some splash of Sprite. The blue, a little bit of blueberry juice, fresh squeezed. A couple of blueberries. And the miracle, of course, is our P3 Placid Vodka, pure, proud, and placid. Shaky, shaky. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Super recipe. Thank you very much. Cheers. Here's to you. For Mountain Lake Journal Extra, I'm Derek Mearden at the Lake Placid Distillery in Lake Placid, New York. I'm going to be doing a little research for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> I'd like not to be bothered. Thank you very much. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Can I have another one of those? In an hour. Would you make it in that? <laughs> <laughs>